So it's spring 2024. What's more challenging? Is it shedding 20 pounds to get ready for summer? Is it quit smoking, quit turkey? Is it getting a PhD degree? Nope. The hardest thing right now is getting a brand new Porsche 911 on location. If you want to beat the odds, keep on watching. POV as a Porsche enthusiast, you probably have a huge Porsche 911 poster in your bedroom since you were young. You spend countless, and I mean countless of hours in the Porsche configurator. You know every option, every trim, every color combo, every PDS color available. You've been saving money since you were young. You've been saving from every summer job, bonus, you finally got a promotion, you finally reached a milestone. Now, now is the time for you to get a brand new Porsche 911. So that was me actually two years ago. To the life of me, I actually couldn't find an allocation anywhere. I personally think these steps would help you guys out. So step one, before you do anything else, do your research. So what I mean by this is actually prepare your ultimate build code. So that means in a best case scenario, what car you would get. GTS, the base, Carrera T, Targa, Cab, whatever it is. Number two is build two or three more build codes. That is still what you want, but you can kind of forego some options. A good example is maybe you will want PDCC, which is the Porsche Shorter Brakes. There's a lot of stop sales going on right now, so you kind of have to decide if you want that or not. Another thing is the manual option. There was a stop sale for the manual option. It's good to think about if you do have the chance to either get it or not get it, would you actually take the allocation? Speaking of stop sales, there's a few options that you might not realize that often get pushed backwards or they don't even produce it anymore. So one of them is the PDS, which is the paint to sample. They always run into stop sale or your production week gets pushed. So if you're on a timeline, definitely be weary of that. Another thing is the aero kit. I remember in mid-2023, there was a huge stop sale for that kit. So you basically cannot get that kit anyhow. Even if you wait for two, three months, you basically cannot get that. And if you put a code that has that, it will get rejected. Another thing would be the lightweight glass that had a stop sale too. And believe it or not, deviated stitching, which happened to me, that had a stop sale too. So if you watch my previous videos, for my own Tiger 4 GTS, the tachometer, the seat belts, the chronometer, it's all speed yellow. But the deviated stitching is actually a different kind of yellow. The main reason is there was a stop set for that specific color. So unfortunately, I couldn't get that color to match, but I got a more golden yellow. I forgot what color it is. If you look side by side, the deviated stitching is a bit more yellow. It's a bit more golden. But just the speed yellow, it's a bit more like flat yellow. From far, you won't see the distance, but if you put it side by side, you do see a slight difference. So if you really ain't know about that, just be weary about it. Some more options to think about will be the all-wheel drive system and the rear axle steering. I believe there was some stop sale going too, so it really depends on your timeline and your budget. Just try to see if you can navigate that around. So after you've done all your research, let's go to step two. Step two is actually go to a Porsche dealership or go to a dealership that has a Porsche 911. Duh, pretty straightforward, right? It's so straightforward, you might just see past it and actually jump the step. So it's actually very important to actually see the car in person, view it, and if you can, bring your spouse, your family, bring your dog. Make sure they're all involved in your purchase process. The main reason is because you're so tunnel vision in buying and Porsche 911 hype, you don't realize there's a lot of other different needs that has to be satisfied for your next car. Let's say if you have a huge golf bag, there is a frunk in the 911 but no trunk, and the frunk is not that big. So if you have to bring your golf clubs, that might be a problem. If sometimes there's a third person for you to drive around, if you or your spouse is pretty tall, if you have kids and they're pretty slender, that might be a huge problem too. And one important point is the seats. There's three different seats. There's the bucket seats, there's a four-way speed, and there's the 18 power seat. So before you order anything, it's best to actually try them each and just to make sure you're comfortable. Porsche 911 is a very versatile car. Some people want it as a race car, so a bucket seat will do. But if you're like me, you want it as a race car and as a daily driver. To me, I think the 18-way seat is the best. A, because it's got the memory seats, and B, it's still got that bucket seat hugging situation for you, and it does give you great lumbar support. So it's actually best to get all the opinions from your spouse and your family, rather than just you ordering what you want. And then when you pick up the car, you find out it's not the best car for you. That's going to be the worst feeling ever. 
because you've been saving your money for so long, finally here, but it actually doesn't suit your needs. That's the worst feeling. So after all that, let's go to step three. Step three is actually talk to a Porsche salesperson face to face. I know a lot of people don't want to travel, they're just lazy, they just want to do a cold call. But as a salesperson myself, I would actually love to actually meet your client, know their needs, know them in person. For me, that gives me a better understanding of what you actually want. Um, it's actually good for the dealership too, because for a salesperson, you want to sell to a customer that would actually appreciate your product, not flip it not regret it and actually come back for service and will actually introduce you more clientele. That's what the salesperson ultimately wants. And for a dealership point of view, they will actually want you back for a service because that will actually boost the dealership's CSI. And another thing is if that car gets shipped, deported or flipped, that will actually hurt the future allocation for that dealership. That's why it's actually best for a buyer to let the salesperson actually know them. And while you're in the dealership, try to meet a sales manager too. So that way they will kind of like, at the back of their mind, they will kind of still remember you if suddenly a bonus allocation comes along. While you're going through that, gently let your salesperson know that you're more interested in leasing. Leasing is actually the most preferred by a dealership versus cash or financing. When a customer leases, the dealership gets a bonus CSI. And when you lease, there is a high percentage that you will actually trade the car in in the future and buy another car from that particular dealership. That's why for dealerships, they actually prefer you to lease. So when you actually give your ultimate bill code to your salesperson, actually go through some kind of must-haves and can-haves too. So for me, my must-have is a chalk gray with black interior yellow stitching. I prefer GTS. I don't really mind GTS Coupe, Cabaret, or Targa. Targa for me is top priority, but I will still settle for a Cabriolet and a Coupe. For me, the price range, the budget is pretty much similar, so I'm okay with that. So just give them some parameters that you're actually okay, not just I just want this, 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 and that's it. Because sometimes when, when allocation comes down, it's a really fast process. They only have a few minutes to kind of go through the list and find out which customers they can present that to. Because if that customer doesn't take that allocation, it might go away. So for them, it's best to actually know what your must-have is and what your alternative is. After that, gently let them know your timeline. Like, do you need something ASAP? Can we wait three months, six months, a year? So for Audi, it's basically every season, so every three to four months, there's allocations coming down. So if they kind of, kind of know what your timeline is, like they can kind of plan ahead. You don't really have to bribe them, but just be nice and just be as pleasant as possible. And just try to leave a good impression because I'm sure they have hundreds of people on their own list. But if you can somehow give them a good impression and they will actually remember you, the chances of getting an allocation is actually pretty good. So before you leave the dealership, actually let them know that you're willing to put a sizable deposit down. By sizable, I don't mean like a thousand, two thousand, put like five thousand, ten thousand. Make sure it's a fully refundable deposit as well and have the sales manager sign it. So the main reason for doing this is to show them that you're actually willing to put skin in the game and you're actually serious about getting a 911. I see so many people come down to our dealership before looking for an R8 allocation and then they just won't put their deposit down. For us, it doesn't seem serious. Even if an allocation does come down, you'll be down at the bottom of the list because we go through our returning VIP customers first and if they don't want it, we'll actually go through people that actually put the skin in the game, aka a deposit first. Then, if no one takes it, then we'll go down the list. So putting your skin in the game and showing that you're actually really interested really helps. Step three, be patient. Getting an allocation is not super quick. It takes time like every good thing does. Try to reach out, touch base to your Porsche salesperson every month or so. Generally give them a phone call, text, email, that would be great. Don't be too pushy, don't be too harsh. Keep in mind, salesperson works for a commission, so if they can actually sell you a car, they'll be definitely wanting to do so. Um, it won't help if you call them every two to three days. Like, if there is no allocation, there's nothing that could be done. If you're in the US, try to explore different local areas. So if, let's say if you're in New York, try to go to New Jersey, 
you never know, there might be allocations available as well. In Canada, you'll be fine, but in US, dealerships might charge you an ADM. An ADM is additional dealer markup. So if you want to kind of skip the line, sometimes dealerships might offer you an ADM. Let's say the ADM for GTS right now is around 10,000. You can skip the line, you can be the next allocation. It sounds bad, but think of the opportunity cost. If you really want one ASAP for 992.1, and if they can actually guarantee you an allocation, that's definitely worth thinking about. So the main reason is, if you wait a year afterwards, the MSRP goes up, the 10,000 ADM might just be the MSRP for the next year's cars anyway. So if you're paying that upfront, you're basically just skipping the line, but getting the car earlier. Another thing is a lot of things might change. Let's say uh, if the 992.2 comes out earlier, there will be a higher MSRP jump. You might not like the options or the engine offered in the 992.2, and you definitely want a 992.1. If that's the case, the 10,000 ADM might not be as bad as you think. Another thing is you can always negotiate. Like if they offer you 10,000, you might say they do five, you can do a deal. There's always stuff to negotiate. One more thing is if you have a trade-in that's a nice car, that might definitely help you too. Let's say if you have a really nice older 911, M3, M4, an AMG, an Audi, Corvette, whatnot. Sometimes these will actually help because they're actually making money both ways from their trade-in and from a new car sale. So that might actually push up the list. Last but not least, ED. ED means European Delivery. It's actually a really important bonus point and if you can actually do it, do it. It doesn't cost you as a buyer, but it costs the dealership, I think around a thousand or so. But dealerships actually like this because if you do buy an ED from that dealership, that allocation does not count from that dealership. So essentially they'll be selling you two cars for the price of one allocation. So ED means you actually go to Germany, go to the factory to pick up your car. You spend a week there, cruise it around, and after one week just drive to the nearest port, and Porsche will actually ship your car back to you, to your own country, for free. ED sounds really, really good. Uh, you get the full Porsche experience, you get to go through the factory, go for a tour in Europe as well. But logistic is going to be a nightmare. So before you go through ED, make sure that you actually have time to actually go there. You actually take time off work. There is no production delays. There is no stop sale. Just make sure everything before you actually do the ED. Um, when you sign for doing the ED, there's actually a contract saying if you somehow can't make it, there is a penalty fee. So definitely, definitely read everything through before you sign it. One more barrier for the ED is you will have to pay the VAT, which is the European tax, up front. So before you pick up your car from the factory, I think you have to show, I think around 10% of the sales tax. Yes, you can get that tax back when your car actually reaches your own country, but it's just, for some people, it's just a pain to actually shell up that much cash, especially if you're leasing it or financing or whatnot. And that was actually one of the reasons I didn't actually do it. It was COVID back then, there's a lot of delays, and B, I just didn't want to shell that much cash up front. If you can do ED, that's definitely a bonus point for you and the dealership. Bonus tips. Go to car meets that has Porsche cars and talk to the owners. You would never know, they might have some insights that you might not know. For me, that actually really works because at first I wanted a coupe GTS. After going to a few car meets, I actually found the Targa to be more prettier. And after talking to a few owners, Targa is one of the best 911s to hold its value, apart from obviously GD3, GD4, RS, something like that. So apart from GT cars, the Targa GTS actually keeps a lot of its value. So that's actually one of the main reasons I picked that car. But honestly, I would have never known unless I've gone to a car meet. Another thing is when you go to a car meet, current Porsche 911 owners might actually refer you to their own salesperson. They obviously won't get any referral fees or whatnot, but it just helps them to get a GT car in the future and it helps you to get a 911 allocation earlier. So while I was doing some research for this video, I found out something that's really interesting. So apparently the base 911, that's the hardest allocation to get. So the main reason why is because the MSRP of that car is the lowest and customers that actually buy that car won't add any options. And additional options is the main way that Porsche makes more growth for each car. So because of that, Porsche is more reluctant to provide any base 911 allocations. 
On the contrary, the Carrera T, I'm not sure why, it seems to be the easiest allocation to get. If you go through Facebook or Instagram, there is a few popping up here or there. So if the Carrera T allocation is what you're looking for, it should be easier for you to get. And then surprisingly, GTS is slightly easier to get than S. I don't know why S is the hardest to get. Honor is still pretty hard to get any allocation at all, but comparison-wise, T will be the easiest, GTS, and then S. And then if you're looking for just a base, four or just a base that's going to be the hardest one of all so last but not least thank you guys for watching if you guys have any questions or whatnot leave it at the comments down below so with the 992.1 production coming to an end very very soon keep on trying keep on just be be patient i'm sure you guys will get one and if you guys are looking for 992.2 if you don't mind waiting i'm sure you will get one too good luck guys have a great day peace out